Hi, everybody. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. We're the Everyone's Horror YouTube channel. And we thank you very much for hanging out with us. We are your family, and you guys are our family. We love you guys very, very much, and thank you guys for hanging out with us. We are into an awesome story of the story of Toby Yaw and his son, Toby. And anyone, let's go through chapter one and two. Where, what happened? Where are we at? Let's get anyone who hasn't seen this. Let's fill everybody in with what exactly it is. And I'll, I'll preface this by saying there is a little, little tiny Torah observant family from back in the days. Is what Toby Yaw and his wife Kana, and um, they were in, <coughs> excuse me, captivity, to where nobody was keeping Torah. Nobody's keeping the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator. And for those who do not know anything about us, we are the people that believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are good for all time, for all generations, for everything. And the example that Toby Yah is doing and is showing is how we should all be living our lives. We should all be helping the poor. We should all be taking care of the hurt. We should be taking care of those who are unable to take care of themselves. And this is why this story is, is an amazing story. And so yesterday, what, what happened yesterday, gentlemen? Yesterday, we basically, we went through, starting with the first chapter, basically get the introduction. We find that he's an exile, that he works for a king, but he's a Torah observant person that working for the Gentiles because they are in exile. Basically, chapter two, he does good deeds. And chapter three, he basically celebrates the Passover. He celebrates... Wait, wait, we're not even... We're, or chapter two, chapter two. Yeah, we're doing chapter three today, son. He celebrates the Passover, and he has basically... He, this dead person that he takes care of until they're basically completely dead, and then he buries them after he's unclean, and then he basically goes blind. He basically loses. His yeah, he he's sitting there, and so he's doing he's doing what they don't want him to do, which is bury the dead. Our Creator wants us to to not have the dead out and exposed. Um, if you're hung on a tree, you're supposed to have it cut down at, before the the end of the day. That is what we are supposed to do. And he was out there burying the dead. And um, there was a, his son yesterday said, Dad, there's a, a person that's outside strangled outside the marketplace. That was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I pre, pre read all this. So, um, And so yesterday, and so he made him go out, you know, immediately he went and he went to bury the dead. And um, that is something, I don't know, this is a, a very, very cool story. So let's take a look at this and we will discuss this. I'll just read it. And if someone has anything to break into before I make it to the end, um, let me know, but if not, we can discuss it in. So keep your comments and stuff to the end. The even being grieved, I wept, and my sorrow prayed, and in my sorrow prayed, saying, O Yahuwah, your righteousness and all your works and all your ways are kindness and truth, and you judge truly and righteously forever. We're sorry about the dog lapping water, everyone. It's just the way it is. Remember me and look on me. Do not punish me for my sins and ignorance and the sins of my fathers who have sinned before you. For they did not obey your commands. Therefore, you have delivered us for plunder and to captivity and to death and for a proverb of reproach to all the, all the nations among whom we are dispersed. And now your right rulings are many and true. Deal with me according to my sins and my fathers, because we have not guarded your commands, nor walked in truth before you. Now, therefore, deal with me as seems best to you and command my spirit to be taken from me, that I become dust and become earth. For it is more profitable for me to die rather than to live, because I have heard false reproaches and have much sorrow. Command, therefore, that I may now be delivered out of this distress and go into the everlasting place. Do not turn your face away from me. It came to be on the same day that in Achmetha, a city of Madai, Sarah, the daughter of reg -Uel, was also reproached by her father's female servants because she had been married to seven husbands whom Ashmedi, the evil spirit, had killed before they had lain with her. Do you not know, they said, that you have strangled your husbands? You have already had seven husbands. Neither were you named after any of them. Why do you punish us for them? If they are dead, go your way after them. Let us never see from you either a son or daughter. When she heard these words, she was very sorrowful that she thought to strangle herself. But she said, I am the only daughter of my father. And if I do this, it shall be a reproach to him. And I shall bring his gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Then she prayed toward the window and said, Baruch are you, O Yahuwah, my Elohim. In your Kodesh and esteemed name be Baruch and esteemed forever. Let all your works praise you forever. 
And now, O Yahuwah, I turn my eyes and my face toward you and say, take me out of the earth that I may hear the reproach no more. You know, Yahuwah, that I am pure from all sin with man and that I, had never, that I never polluted my name nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. I am the only daughter of my father. Neither has he any child to be his heir, neither any near relative, nor has he any living son to whom I may keep myself for a while. My seven husbands are already dead, and why should I live? But if it does not please you that I should die, command that some compassion be had for me, and favor shown me, that I hear no more reproach. So the prayers of them both were heard before the excellency of Almighty Elohim. And Raphael was sent to heal them both, that is, to scale away the whiteness of Tobiah's eyes and to give Sarah the daughter of Reguel as a wife to Toby, the son of Tobiah and to bind Ashmedi, the evil spirit, because she belonged to Toby by right of inheritance. At the same time, Tobiah came home and entered into his house, and Sarah, the daughter of Regio, came down from her upper room. All right, thoughts? We're at the end of this. This is the um, end of this. That was the end of that. So, I mean, okay. so it seems like it's all planned out. It seemed like she was meant for Tobiah, so... Yeah, so we have we have a name of an evil spirit, right? And this evil spirit is able to kill her seven husbands, yeah. and they are um, to like take over her and like she just like beats them up till they well, die. Or this is before that. So this what what happens is before they ever make it to the marriage bed, somehow they he dies. They die, and so um, it is the point where seven husbands have come and gone, and that kind of. Uh, you know, remember when uh, Messiah Yahushua, they were talking about the, uh, you know, if they have seven wives, what would happen or something of the sort? Mm -hmm. Who would have them in the, in the, the Shemaim? And um, Messiah says, you neither know, you know, what's in the scriptures or not, because, you know, there's no marriage or any of that in the Shemaim. So um, we have Sarah, who had her father's female servants who were sitting there messing with her. And they're saying, why don't you, we don't want to see a kid from you. You've strangled seven husbands. Now, these are... The servants, these are the slaves. So if there's people to make fun of you, that is probably worse feeling than other feelings. It's to have the people who are essentially slaves in your house making fun of you. And um, so this was her prayer. Her prayer was to die. She, she wanted to die. And um, if not, she wanted her reproach to be taken away and for Yah to find some favor on her. So this is a very interesting story. Anyone have any final thoughts on this? Um, not really, except, you know, the angel comes down to, he has a mission. Yeah, a mission. Yeah, and this is Raphael, right? This is this is not just an angel. This is the angel, one of the uh, great ones. And um, he had a mission. And so I guess if you can see the power of our creator is that there's always a plan and there's always something going on. And you never know when one of the messengers of Yah have been sent on a mission to help you, right? You don't know. We would never know. The messengers of Yah look just like every other human being. We would not know unless it's revealed to us. And this is the power, the supernatural power that our creator has for those who walk in his laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, if you have taken the religion and you say that you're a Christian and you don't want to walk in the laws, statutes, and commandments, then by default, you are not considered a child of the Most High. You're considered a child of the devil because that's what the devil does. The devil loves to uh, be evil and the d devil loves to be oppressive to our creator and oppressive to his people. So we encourage everybody to read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy and be like the uh, family of Tobiah and Toby and, and Kana. They were keeping laws, statutes and commands when it wasn't popular, when it was getting them hurt. And in, I think it was the first chapter, Toby Yaga got all of his stuff taken away because he was burying the dead. They came and they, they took all that he had. The only thing he had left was his wife and his son. So it doesn't mean just because you're in Torah that everything great is going to happen to you. What's going to great is going to happen to you is that we have a shot at the kingdom to come and we have a shot for our soul because right now, if we don't keep the law, statutes, and commands, there is no shot for our soul. All right, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. We love you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. All right. So